Hey folks, Rob Potter again here on the Victory of Light Radio Show podcast. And uh, I have a, another wonderful uh, guest speaker, a new friend of mine who I've been uh, uh, recommended and uh, looked into some information. And um, we chatted and I really feel comfortable having her come to my uh, Mount Shasta Summer Conference this year. Uh, her name is Vivian Chauvet. Is that correct? Oh my God, Rob, beautiful. Yes, right on. Bonsoir, mon ami. Oh là là, vous parlez français. <laughs> oui, oui, oui. Mais we oui. will, we will, uh, enchanté, uh, s'il vous plaît, tout de suite. <laughs> well, I am very impressed, Rob. <laughs> no, I took German in high school. I went to France and hung out for a little bit here and there uh, when I lived in Spain years ago. But it's a pleasure to have you on here. You're actually from Canada, is that correct? That is correct, Rob. I am originally from Montreal, so the French part of Canada. Well, I grew up in a double French culture on my father, on my dad's side, they're all from France. So I am like, I always said I'm a double dip French, you know, like very <laughs> super French in nature. But I'm, I've been living in Arizona for the last 15 years now. So I'm, I'm at home in the desert right here. <laughs> Excellent. I, I kind of love the desert, too. I live in Palm Springs, and I'm in the mountains, but I'm pretty much a beach boy at heart. So um, let's see. Um, you have the beautiful uh, light codes. That's your logo there. And um, um, people can enjoy that on your website. I wanted to just, my information from Vivian is um, she is a Nocturian hybrid. And for those of you know who know me, I'm pretty... You know, when people make certain claims, I kind of zero in and, and hone in. And um, I, I had a conversation with Vivian. She answered the right questions. Um, you know, uh, from my experiences with the Venusians and from what I've been learning from Raymond Keller, uh, you know, my prejudices, my apperceptions uh, have really been, I was always pretty tolerant and uh, broad-minded, but I'm learning to be a lot more broad-minded in many aspects as the galactic uh, space friends and family are coming to nurture humanity through its gestation stage into the new vibration. So uh, I, I kind of give my personal stamp of uh, I feel she's genuine, and of course, no one knows everything for sure. But um, I'm going to introduce you to Vivian Chauvet, and she's going to just tell us about her history and as much as she wants. And uh, feel free to open up your website as you're talking or not, and uh, tell us about your history and how you came to become this kind of like. A cosmic messenger, and I'm sure I'm going to have questions about the, the hybridization and all that stuff. But we had a conversation before, and I was uh, pretty impressed. I'm looking forward to having you come to this year's Mount, Shemmer, Mount Shasta Summer Conference. And folks, by the way, if you are going to buy a ticket, um, stay tuned for Vivian's website. I'd like you to purchase there. That's how my speakers get paid, is by the referrals. So if you're a follower of her, please uh, use her link to get to the uh, information on the contrast. And I'm going to mute myself and listen attentively with all of you. Oh, thank you so much, Rob. I want to, I'm very grateful to be on the podcast right now, but especially very grateful to be part of a next wonderful distinguished line of speakers at the Mount Shasta conference. I know you work absolutely distinguished. Um, you know, I, I feel privileged to be part of it, especially this year. Now we're going through so much changes as a community of light, as a group, as a family of light. And I know you've been working very hard at putting together something of the higher caliber, uh, bringing into the hierarchy of light and beyond. So we are, when I say we, I always speak on behalf of my interstellar group that I represent and the Octurans in particular. And so I want to just let you know how much it does this this really means to me and I'm grateful. My pleasure um, to have you here and it's an honor to um, work with people and uh, I think we're all bringing a little piece of the puzzle and even mm -hmm. we may have our real contacts and we may even have different perceptions or get different information and just realize folks, there's a lot of worlds out there and they have different perceptions and we all have to just kind of keep learning, keep our minds open and keep listening to the message because eventually, very soon, we're going to have some some more um, advanced levels of understanding. So please share us. Tell us your story now. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. And and right before I dive into my story, gladly, you made a very important point about being open to the interstellar, interstellar groups, uh, bringing their perspective, bringing their teachings, their assistance. Of course, we talk about the enlightened ones, those who are advanced consciously, not necessarily just technology, but consciousness. And this is part of why I'm here as an Octurian, a biological Octurian hybrid. It's my presence as a hybrid accelerates the um, the connection, the direct interconnections or interactions to and with the, the Octurian perspective. So what she said was just a completely key element to what I'm here for. So as you introduce my, you, as you introduce me, my name is Vivian Chauvet. I originally, I'm originally from Canada. I discover at a very early age on, Rob, I was probably at least five years old, that I was a being of two worlds. Uh, I felt like uh, like the character of Spock in Star Trek, who was, was himself a hybrid and a beautiful uh, ambassador. So I discovered a very, very uh, young age, not only by genetically, physically, the way I was very different. I was evolving, uh, growing differently. My, my, even my skeleton muscular system was behaving in completely different ways that any normal human being would go through a certain growth. I was not going through that same growth. But I was on the consciousness level. I've always been in that trans holographic communication with my interstellar group. And after time, I would see with my eyes, like portal opening and being coming through. Uh, I had a portal in my bedroom when I was a child and they were coming through my closet. So I was always concerned they have to go through the clothing, uh, you know, the hangers, the boxes and to the door. And he always says, there's no worries, little, little light. They always call me little light you know, physical object is of no concern to us. And then I, they taught me what does it mean because they were trying, you know, moving to interdimensional space and they will come and then we will have conversations. So what it means to have a communication with mean whether it is to transfer of thought, you know, trans transmission of telepathic communication where they will convey body of information, um, you know, about myself, about my role, about my family, about how things were going as having the same kind of communication as we have now, except we didn't need any microphone or Zoom or any form of technology. It was a direct uh, connections. So I can tell you one thing, it's truly a privilege to be uh, of service to Prime Creator, to be of service to the High Council, the Octurne High Council, uh, I have clear memories of being in my full Octarian form prior to this incarnation, preparing this mission uh, to respond better to the need, especially as we could already foresee the organic timeline changing so much. And also we could see that humanity in, was reaching a higher potential for the ascension timeline. So we have to, I want to make sure that what kind of assistance we were providing was not just from, you know, transmission or to our ship or teachings or channels. I want to be like boots on the ground, if you want, and be on right here as also a partially human, being able to navigate through the changes, being able to be part of the crew, so to speak. Uh, right. There's nothing, does that make sense well, when you're here? I, I, one of the things I wanted to say here, folks, I know a lot of the, a lot of my friends, my personal friends that I've known for young, and a lot of people are going, okay, we're going into the woo-woo stuff, and may as well put a little tinfoil around my pyramid and listen, but I'd like you to uh, give us the history of um, the hybridization process. You look completely human. Take us through that. Um, you know, I may have some questions for you there, but... Um, uh, you talk about your father and your mother. What was the hybridization process? And um, folks, I want to make it clear there's there's different types of genetics are the coin of the realm. And uh, the Earth has been part of a grand experiment of many different races here that have had input so that they could all share 
in uh, a new race that they would not fight over because genetics was causing a lot of problems in the galaxy a long, long time ago. And we're now at the point where no longer uh, do those races necessarily need to come and extract DNA from humanity. Now humanity is on its own. We're all kind of homogenized now to a certain extent. And um, it's not like a gray or a reptilian abduction and a hybridization, which um, is definitely designed to take over and to create, you know, their boots on the ground f to literally control the civilization. Um, this is to expand the Adamic uh, Cadman race, and uh, many of the races do have extractions of their boots on the ground or their star seeds here, uh, which was made in agreement before they would take their DNA and bring them down and basically uh, unharm them in their personal life, but to to um, you know see how the soul was developing. So there is kind of a, an aggressive, more militaristic type of negative. Uh, use of genetics, and then there's a, a beneficial um, uh, use of genetics. So I don't think we all should be looking forward to, uh, you know, being excited. I have a gray baby, and I'm meeting my children, and all that. I think that we need to focus on where we are expanding uh, the knowledge of truth and love. So I just wanted to preface that uh, because I have in the past said some things about, uh, you know, the hybridization process, and I, I think um, in Vivian's case. Um, from my apperception and my judgment, I think it's a positive thing. So share that little story with you and the details of kind of from your birth, your parents, and, and how all of this took place. Mm, great point, Rob. And that's also part of the reversal of thought system. What you just mentioned, uh, we have heard so much about hybridization process, whether it was seemingly forced, unwilling, imposed for different agendas. This is also part of what we are healing ourselves. You are healing yourselves also as a civilization. So that's very important. Uh, if you look at who are the Octurians, Octurians are known as one of the most enlightened interdimensional civilization there is uh, interacting with the earth. So think of us as cosmic teachers uh, for self-discipline ship, preparing for light body, Ascension, we are a model of future self. We're here to hold a space with a type of assistance that is empowerment, that allows you to stabilize yourself, that stabilize also your energy body so you can better adapt to receive higher vibrational state and really advance and take your full sovereignty as divine being of light and as a family of light as a civilization. So little parentheses I wanted to make. So in my case, I have nothing to do whatsoever with any military experiences or hybrid aberration process or anything that we have heard before. I'm a very unique prototype. And what it means is that I chose to go through this incarnation in the form of an advanced nocturne hybrid, I chose that and it was a, a sole cho choice that I made. And I do have clear memory of how I this project came about, talking with the high councils, talking with our elders to look at, you know, how can we approach and create a very unique prototype and really pushing the envelope because when you look at a civilization, when you look at such as Andromedan, Octarians, the F4, the Antares, those are really have reached a level of ascension, a really advanced level. Descending into physical matter on the third dimensional plane is very difficult. This is not something that we would rather do. And, when you advance and you already reach like body ascension and you are, you are ascending way beyond even the fifth dimension and you primarily existing between a six, seven, eight, even ninth dimension, descending back into matter will require a lot of energy to be able to fit in that form and that density. So you have to understand that the fact that I chose to do this was already remarkable and was presenting a lot of dilemmas to make sure that the physical body 
my physical conduit would be viable. So we have to look at making sure the immune system will be uh, healthy and balanced. We're looking at all the internal organs, the growth of the body, making sure that I will be able to be to, able to function here. So I want to add those layers to the process to make the difference between genetic manipulation, alteration that the human race have gone through for generations versus a very advanced enlightened civilization says, I'm going to volunteer and I'm the one who's going to come back to the planet. I'm going to descend and accept to descend into a lower frequency while maintaining a hybrid body. So I think that brings a little bit more perspective here in terms of, you know, um, what the word hybrids and how it applies to me. Yeah, that's important. I think that, uh, you know, when you, you know, it's always easier to descend than to ascend and you take the risk of, of uh, getting enmeshed here. I'm sure there's many star seeds that have kind of fallen by the wayside of traumatized of the conditions on the earth and end up being alcoholics or even murderers or falling down negative paths that they never would have taken. It's all part of the, the experiential game because we're, we are more than the physical body, folks. We're the soul. It goes beyond gender. It goes beyond, uh, you know, genetics. It, it's it's the pure nature of our spirit spark or Christ consciousness or the, or the God within us. So let's go into the the physical aspect of that hybridization process and how that took place. You were born um, through a regular mother in a regular hospital on the earth or explain how that hybridization took place. Was your father half Arcturian, your mother half Arcturian and giving you a half and half or explain, explain the physical aspect and go into the details because we're talking about something that's very woo woo for a lot of people but I want uh, uh, people to broaden their minds to understanding um, um, how the star seeds and the various types of, uh, of influences that can are allowed to take place behind the scenes. Because when you come in here and live in an earth body, then you're free to uh, influence the world. An Arcturian can't come down here and you know stand up here and everyone would worship him as God or call him a demon or attack him. So. Um, the way through is boots on the ground and uh, the individual taking on the, the responsibilities of the earth life and uh, you know trying the best they can to to bring the light so give us the from you know before your birth or the birth parents give us the understanding of what being a hybrid is for you right and by respect to my human parents i will share what is the most appropriate at this point uh, in my case, I chose to, I wanted to have my human mother to carry me full term so I can already establish that point of connections and already align myself with the earth plane as opposed to, you know, have been artificially grown in a lab, which have been, will have completely changed the dynamics, even in the soul consciousness. So I am the product, so to speak, of a human mother and my magical father is 100% Octarian. So this is why we took that project to a whole different level to see that the, cap the capability to make sure that both aspects were compatible with each other, whether it's genetics, whether it's DNA, whether it's, uh, we have to look at to make sure that it was compatible and once that was determined and then the mix was given, then my mom carried me full terms. And I, I was born on the ship. And that's why I was shown. I have complete memory. They showed me when it happened. Okay, so yes. I have a question here. So your father was, was he on board a spaceship? Your mother had a contact or did your father live on the earth? Was he born on the earth? Um, he was a full Octurian. Um, and uh, your mother uh, fell in love with him or became, had an agreement or, uh, how, what, what, how does that work? No, no hundred percent of turn can live on this earth. It would be impossible. So no, they're not, if you're not turning on this earth, unless you are in hybrid like myself or as a variation of a version of a hybrid, which is a completely different old category 
or a star seed. When you reach a level of ascension and enlightenment like this, you, you can live on a planet which still exists in the polarity field or fragmentation field. So my father being 100% of Trin is obviously exclusively on the ship or back into our realms. Uh, he's not on the planet, at least not in the physical aspect as you think of it. It was done through a complete conscious soul agreements that was took place prior to everyone's incarnation. So there was proper soul agreement has been done. And then once my, my mother, my, magical, my, my human mother was born, then they start to reconnect with her. And for many, many, many years, they have been in direct intercommunication physically when she would go back, go on the ship and interact with them back and forth, be preparing in a very sequencing ways, uh, making sure that she remembers, understand the contract, go back into that state of consciousness and also review the information that was given even prior to the incarnation. And so it was a very sequential, um, many, many sequential years of interactions with her to lead to for me to come through. Uh, it has to be done that way. Um, I will absolutely not talk about the reproduction system of the Octarians. It's honestly beyond this plane of reality and it's nothing to do with the way you perceive reproduction. And again, out of respect of those who are in, involved in this very unique and uh, very selfless project, I will not go there. And I'm asking for respect on that level. Yeah. So, can I make a hypothesis, and maybe you could say yes or no? Um, yeah. I've heard that um, that there's not a physical interaction mm -mm. in some worlds. That it's a melding of the beings, and the woman um, becomes pregnant. Is that maybe possibly part of it? It's it's closer to that. I know that they utilize a what's called a template of a template of consciousness where there's um you know the dna and that's where the genetics take place but you're absolutely correct there is no physical interactions there's no intercourse uh, none of that is done it's a whole a whole different level so it's more in that direction okay thanks okay go ahead i, I just wanted because yeah, we are talking about physical bodies and genetics i just wanted clarity on that okay yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely and of course, during the pregnancy, you know, they would closely provide assistance, making sure that, you know, and everything was going well. And so, and as I was mentioning, when the time came, uh, this is where um, my birth took place on one of our ship to assure that I would be viable, that I would be able to survive the birthing process. Yeah, go, continue on. I'm I'm listening here. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> I just I just put it on. Uh, I had it to, to uh, interact off off camera here. I didn't want to distract the audience. Oh, okay, I just wanted to make sure there was no interruption on your hand, uh, sound or recording wise. So, and I do remember that uh, they showed me many years, many many years ago. They said they came to me and they said we have a gift for you. It's time for you to see and remember the sacredness of your birth and how it took place and so i was consciously i went to the ship and they showed me the recollection the archives of how it took place and it has to be done through our technology and it's also in our interface because the ship is conscious and it creates an an energy feel uh, a spatial time a dimensional spatial time that is much more in tune with me as opposed to the dense gravi gravi gravity of the earth and the density of the third dimensional reality. So this is why that they couldn't risk to allow a regular birth in a hospital with medical doctors who have no clue how to handle such a prototype uh, known as a hybrid. So if I had, let's say my body would have perished and I would have disconnected, then the project would have failed. Very and cool. So, very cool. Very it does cool. kind of make you a, a unique birth. It's kind of nice to have this, to understand this process. It's, it's, it's unique in my uh, 
uh, understanding of any other uh, contactees. I'm sure it's probably a lot more um, common than we would think, or certainly that I would have any knowledge of, but I find this fascinating. A spot would say fascinating. Go ahead. Indeed, I like that. Fascinating. I use that line a lot. <laughs> But, you know, I want to share with everyone and with you, Rob, is having that piece of that piece of revelation about myself really helped me, even from a human perspective, okay? It really helps me to understand more and appreciate more who I am, which also really brought a lot of motivation and inner strength to go, you know what? I am here on a great purpose. We all are. I'm just talking about my purpose here. I'm here for make a really make a huge difference, and I'm I'm going to simply come out out of the uh, I call it the the hybrid closet and says, you know what, world, it's time you get to know me as I I, I want to get to know you, and let's work together, you know. Out of the hybrid uh, closed closet, <laughs> that yeah, exactly. portal that you. So I have another interesting aspect of. Um, so obviously, your mother. Uh, maintain full memories. I'd like to hear about your awakening process. I imagine you were probably pretty awake when you were born, but the earth life probably probably didn't maintain full memory, or did you? Or did your mother kind of reveal to you at a certain point you're different and what's going on, and you actually knew that from the as a child growing up? Or how was that awakening and uh, process as a child? And you obviously have. Uh, more sensitive, uh, intuitive psychic abilities that are normal gifts for many other beings, which is probably greatly aided by your uh, the fact of you being a hybrid. Can you address some of those uh, those those thoughts? Of course, that's a great question. Of course, one thing I'm very super privileged about is that I have a very loving, caring, and accepting mother. So she accepted me completely. Because sometimes we hear stories of different aspect of children hybrids or different variation of children hybrid where the mother may not feel as comfortable or accepting. In my case, she was so accepting that she chose not to share with me, you know, or reveal to me my true essence or my true identity in terms of who I am. And it was okay. I understood that she wanted to protect her child in her mind. It's like, okay, I've gone this far. Now she's mine. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to raise her. I'm going to make sure that she's fed, love, and cared for. And then I'm good. You don't need to get involved, <laughs> you know, with the process. So did she get, did she, she talk to you eventually or she didn't tell you anything for until a certain point or? No. Yeah. She didn't say anything until a certain point. And even today, it was just, very just a few bribs here and there and and that's it it's my human dad who talks the most to me about this because he was there and he was there to support the process and he was involved in the the original soul agreements so hold on uh, a second now uh-huh so, uh -huh. so your father and mother were beamed aboard when you were hybridized with your full uh, he was there during the process, and you can keep that private, as as you said. We got a, a general idea that it's a non-physical thing. So, mm -hmm. so he was aware, re retained full memories, and wow, when did when did that kind of first conversation instead of the birds and the bees? They said, let's let's talk about the. Uh, it's time to tell you about the Arcturians and the humans. <laughs> I mean, fantastic, uh, very unique story you have, and I. You know, I think because it is unique, it even gives it more credibility in my mind. So can you share a little bit uh, how that, how your father dealt with that? And, and at what age did you really kind of start realizing your, your, your uniqueness in your surroundings? Yes, yes. Thank you. That's, you're making so many great points, Rob. I feel your energy shifting. It's beautiful to watch. Uh, my let's call it my, my coming into consciousness and realization was really for me, again, five years old, it's almost like I went through a portal of consciousness opening, something really opened up. And I didn't need, I did not really need the exterior world to tell me about who I am, because I already had the feedback from my also my other aspect of myself, because you know that we are 
holographic and multidimensional by na in nature. So my, my Arcturian aspect will also speak and talk to me and help me navigate to the changes. And one thing that was very challenging for me is I was, I was unable to relate to other children or to relate to the three-dimensional concept of life, whether it's cool, whether it how you need to play, what kind of games you need to play, um, you know, being more in terms of, hey, the more we com competition, competition is healthy. I'm like, that's bull. I disagree with that completely. Uh, how about oneness and community con consciousness? But that was even at five, I was thinking about that. I remember uh, challenging adults who will come to me with concept what I knew because I could feel their thoughts. I can feel the intentions. And then I would get the feedback from my doctor and other self in my group telling me, well, what are you being conveyed right now? It's part of that 3D matrix reality. Here's another version of it. So I would argue with them. And so they would look at me. It's like, what do you know? You're a child, you're five, you're 10 years old. I'm like, oh, I know what I know. You know, and <laughs> so this is how I grew up. Um, and one thing I've got another pivotal change for me was I was in my early 20s. I'm going 19, going on 20. That was another point where my collective came and they said, okay, now we're, go we're going to train you into the becoming of who you really meant to be here. And so my training started there, whether it's consciousness training, whether it's um, holographic healing training, they will really start to coach me. And then they said, we're going to make sure that those who are meant to be on your path will come. And then so I would meet, you know, people along the way that would either have their own type of communication to enter stellar groups, or they would be starseed themselves, or they would be from the angelic realm, or they would be very advanced human beings that already have a state of awakening going on even back then. So, and then of course, as I was growing older, I would say more in my thirties, when my human dad says, you know what, I think that there's a few things we need to talk about. And then he, in, he introduced me to George. George was the code name for my Octarian father. So when he said George used to talk to us and he would show us 50 years in the future what the timelines would look like. Uh, he would tell us about you. He would tell us, okay, um, you know, information to help us also help us as parents. So to my human dad to thank him to show him gratitude for his service, he was allowed to retain his full memory. He still to this day remember everything. That's amazing. That's fantastic. Can you share some of your conversations with your dad with you as you went through the maybe group contact in the 1920s and when you were 30? Or I mean, I'm kind of interested. It's nice to hear of a support thing. I mean, Alex Collier's dad. Um, you know, went into his room and he was being floating on the bed and coming back down, his dad just kind of went, okay, and closed the door. And then the next day, he's, you know, he said, you know, he had a conversation with his dad and his dad didn't really want to go. He just go, well, I guess I believe you now. And, you know, so, I mean, but to have someone uh, who really understood was part of that um, must have been very comforting for you and must have been uh, pretty exciting. I'm kind of as much as you feel comfortable to share that personal interaction and and, um, um, and how it helped you or along in, in your awakening. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'm so with you 100%. I'll share with you one thing and my human dad. So I said, I have two fathers. I have my human dad that I grew up with here on this planet. And I have father who is my Arcturian father. So my human dad would say to me, you know, when your mother and I met, we were teenagers and I used to have this bicycle and I would go pick her up and we would take a long ride. And back in those days, it was all fields. There was no construction, no neighborhood. And so the moment we get on the road, that spaceship will start, come out of nowhere and follow us everywhere we go. 
So of course they were young, they were teenagers. Um, and so he was trying to raise them and tell them telepathically, oh yeah, I'm going to be faster than you try to catch us. So he recalled moments where he would just speed up on the motorcycle and both of them were on the motorcycle, mind you. And he would go really, really fast and stop in a spaceship or seems to have stayed behind completely immobile in the sky and he said in the blink of an eye the spaceship was right above us and then the response was we're still here you know you cannot outrun us we're still going to be here with us and it was just a fun fact that he shared with me the other one was also pretty amazing he said uh, throughout many many years my mom my human mom would receive telepathic clear communication to have rendezvous points. It says it's time for us to meet again. And then so she will tell my dad where to go, where to take her, where location, time, and date. And then they would go there. So after time, what he says that it was always late at night out in the field out of nowhere and he said i had a very small car at the time i re i don't remember the brand but very very small tiny car and they wanted us to go through swamp and, and forestry and pathway that the car would never fit it was impossible and so i had to stop and ask my mom tell them that we cannot reach the rendezvous point they must have made a mistake because there's no path, there's no road for me to go there. And she will reply to him right away in their transmission. Remo release control of your car will take it over. And the car, he felt it would be like transported, almost like lifted off the ground and brought back to the site where the spaceship was waiting for them. And then he said, stay in the car and then she will go you know, do the meeting and talk and do what they need to do. And then she'll come back an hour, two hours, three hours later. And then the entire time, again, as a gift, he will be allowed to stay conscious. He will be in the car, but he will be able to see the spaceship with his physical eyes and still be in that energy and have retained full memory. And then he would bring the car back to safety to the road. And they said, the next thing we know, we're back in the driveway. And it's like, it's eight hours later, you know, it's like, yeah. Yeah. I had myself on mute while I was listening, pretty fascinating. So, <laughs> so even, even uh, you guys uh, and your parent, or uh, you, you guys would have uh, a little bit of lost time. So it, it, it was for, even for you at that point, it was inappropriate for you to have full remembrance of everything at that point, correct? I wasn't there yet. It was just that was before my birth. That was just for my with my parents. I mean, did you have that experience as well? Of missing time? Yeah, that kind of thing. I have experience of missing time and I'm very conscious about it because I know that I was no longer on the planet. So when they when I go off planet, I understand I am disconnecting from the linear time construct. And so when I come back into when I'm being returned on planet and I reinsert myself, so to speak, to match that of the three dimensional linear time construct, then from that perspective, there seems to be a missing time. Huh. Fantastic. Okay. And uh, so. <laughs> Anyway, um, and I, 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 I'm trying to see what conversations did your dad, when he told you about this stuff, did he, uh, um, um, I mean, I don't know. I guess it's just such an interdimensional experience, and it doesn't really matter. But I think maybe at this point, if you could, I'd love for you to uh, share your website, share where people, if they want to go to the conference, and folks, we probably have 25 tickets left, so you better... I, don't, I haven't really counted, but we're going to be selling out pretty soon. So uh, if you do want to come to this year's summer conference and you're a fan of Vivian's, please uh, purchase uh, your tickets from her link. So she's going to open up her website, take us through her, her kind of current mission here as a human hybrid. And uh, 
Um, I'm, I'll probably have some more questions as we go along, but I'm really finding this, uh, this is a, a very unique uh, contact experience um, and of a star suit, so, so to speak. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rob. Uh, it is very fascinating you know, just to think about that ultimately, ultimately, we're all in this together. And always remember, one, one of my favorite quote is that together we always are far more powerful than we can ever be apart. And, you know, the conversation that my, even my human dad would have with my octrine father, you know, I like to have really quickly that even to this day, if my octrine father feel that the, the, connect, the communication of the message is not coming through, what he does, he go talk to my human dad and tell her, call her and tell her that message because she's not receiving it right now. So my dad will call me and says, well, George is back. He has a message for you. And then we will talk about what communication or what what's the message. And then he will bring his own perspective to it. Um, I remember just a few years ago, right here in Arizona, my folks were visiting me. And it was a quiet evening where my human dad goes, oh, here they are. And he said he saw clearly this really, really tall and lanky being coming into the living room. But he could, he could see him physically and looking at us and almost like an acknowledgement that, oh, the, the gang is together and they're all together. And then he will look and acknowledge and, of course, my human dad would acknowledge my current father and then he just went through and dimensionally went back to his interdimensional space so i just want to bring that beautiful heart base information because this is an ongoing process it's been going on even before my incarnation it's going on during my incarnation and will be continuing beyond after when i'm done here and i return back to Arcturus. I know that it's be a simply a beautiful continuous of synergy of communication partnership with each other and you know so i feel i feel very privileged to be part of all of this well obviously we're very happy to uh have you at the conference and share this and it's kind of cool that your dad actually was acting as your liaison there and uh and uh, were you actually were you having the experiences or he was able to see them were you able to see what he was seeing at the same time too or is that yes sometimes they let me see but that particular experience was really meant for my human dad because think of it this way it's also um think, think of it this way render for services he's so selfless he was so accepting of welcoming a very unique child in his care when he accepted me, loved me, I grew up, you know, was taken care of, fed, all of the above. And the relationship that we still have to this day, I'm very privileged to have still both my parents still in this 3D dimension are still here. And still being able to this day to talk about this, connect, and they watch me evolve. They watch me becoming more and more, um, coming into my power, becoming who I was meant to be and who I am meant to be more and more. And after time, is still to this day, still receive insights and also insights for themselves so they can, they too can be supported and sustained in all the changes that we're all going through. So I love the way that we all look after each other, so to speak, if that makes sense. That's really good. Okay, while well, you're pulling up your website here, uh, did you have any uh, superpowers or some, some people go like, what the hell's going on? You know, a bully would come at you and trip or something. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I did, did the teacher ask a question and before she was finished, you say, uh, the hypotenuse and the interior alternative interior angle theorem. <laughs> I mean, you have any, obviously, you must have had some unique, uh, you know, uh, precognition experiences. I mean, did you, uh, uh, anything that, that, might, that might, might be interesting? I find this kind of fascinating. Yes, yes, absolutely. And my abilities is 
the fact it's my presence too. Uh, it's just, can you imagine me sitting in a classroom where I change completely the paradigm? And even though it might be unseen to others, whether it's students, teachers, you know, anybody in the room, for them it was unseen, but they were in the presence, a constant presence of a very advanced interstellar group. And I'm constantly radiating very potent frequencies. And I can tell you it would challenge them because, you know, I would see them change behavioral patterns. I would change them, you know, like they come to walk in the room and they are in a certain state. And then suddenly they would come to fluctuating or they want to miss of a sentence and look at me. And I was like, mm. and then they get confused or things like that. And it was, it was wonderful to see them fluctuating and to be able to, see the assistance around the teachers or those who were there in the room but also we were there to help to heal assist and restore so especially with children at a time where some of them were going through very difficult times and the team will come and assist them it wouldn't be on a conscious level but the assistance was there and it's very complex there's a much more that was happening well i do have my website pulled up in the oh, please pull it up and then take us through it and what you're doing now and your mission and all that kind of stuff Alrighty. so let me just uh give me just a quick moment here there you go okay okay where are you okay i'm there listening right here i'm gonna go you want me to share my screen is that what you Yes, birthday. Alrighty, so like and see here, share my screen. Oh, my screen. Share screen. I don't know if you're gonna let me. No. Okay, everybody. So I am I am really attempting to share my screen. Little button, you, you should have permission. I don't ever stop the screen sharing. So you no, I see that. Okay. Um, it's just telling me that I have to allow Zoom to share a screen for some reason. Oh, huh. I feel like there's a permission. That must be um, you in your settings because well, my I always have it, it's, it's constantly open. Also, oh, the open. Okay, um, oh, uh, oh, my sorry, I see it. Yeah. Okay, why don't um, why don't you why don't give, you, you give it to me I, and I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll open it up. And that's so, right. Let me let me share that with you right away in the chat room and the link. Okay. There you are. It's done. Okay, so go ahead and start sharing your your exciting uh, information here while I. Uh, Open it up. Go ahead, continue. I want you to, to have a hiccup here. Oh, yes, of course. Um, one thing I want to, to share as well is that, you know, being in a conference, we really invite you to come and connect with us. Uh, part of the thing I'm going to do at a conference, part of my lecture, is really doing a powerful Arcturian gateway light activation. And I'm inviting everyone to come and take advantage of this really powerful activation. Oh, there you are. Okay. Yeah, you go ahead and guide me through the um, where you want me to go. Yes, okay. So, have so, a proper art store. I see yeah. you have some wonderful products. Um, you have a looks so, like you have some healing sessions. So why don't you talk about this? Yeah, let's talk about this one in particular. This is our, our signature modality, uh, the Octron Energy Matrix Healing. This is something that my group and I have developed over many years. And so it's really core soul frequency healing. We work with the clients holographically. And uh, it's the first session is really designed to create a foundation to look at what needs to be upgraded, what codes of light can we bring, you know, whether we have to work with the gardens of time, the timelines. It's a modality that is really um, core soul healing and it replaces any outdated um matrix uh, we help you to really shift we help people to really expand and this is just an aspect of um, what we do not necessarily all in one session because 
we know we want to avoid overloading your energetic circuits, but we walk through a process, whether it's, you know, through different type of consultation sessions, when you also have channel guidance that, that comes through and working with us is deeply experiential, very transformational. Um, this is also creating new foundation that, um, is the reconstruction of the soul matrix and the holographic solar body of light. So this is all part of building what's called a new cosmic human design. And we know that we are sending back into our divinity. And so we put together that uh, modality and I can tell you it has grown exponentially in terms of what we can do, the, what we can really, um, the potential of each time you use the unique energy blueprint. So the Octurn energy matrix, we call it an energy matrix because we work with a client at multiple interfaces, including the soul matrix and the body template. And so we're working also through the timelines and the multidimensional aspect. I'll give you an example of this. I had a client um, came to me and was having very beautiful awakening, being on the path for a long time or just recently awakened. And what it was, seems to be instead of all the work and all everything that, you know, that client felt she was doing, there was still something in the abstract field that was still holding her back. So we discovered by connecting with her higher self into the timeline that she had a 50,000 year loops that was still playing out in this lifetime. So we have to go back and close that loop that was bringing her back to ancient, ancient Egypt. And along the way, what happened is that it was interfering into the acceleration of her timeline and also her soul design in this life. So that was really deeply transformational for her to be able to come and resolve that very ancient loop, uh, we call that a loop. Um, that's one example of this. But we we work with different groups, uh, such as the Lyrans. We work very closely with them. We also work with the Syrians, the Andromedans, the Andromeda, Andromedan Council. We work also in partnership with the Interg Intergalactic Councils of Light. Um, and it's just, the potential is, it's limitless uh, that's fascinating deep. that's really fascinating is. here i want to i do want to mention this uh so now we see this beautiful like thing like behind you there very beautiful did you draw that or do you have an artist do that or yes i had an artist many many years ago i had an artist uh drawing this and one if you look this is the full logo and like you see in the background with me it's just an aspect of it but if you look at the logo you see a fuller spectrum uh, besides what looks like um, the two, the two symbol on the side that looks almost like Turlo, those are blueprints of Octurian ships. Um, and those are the exact almost shape that I was shown. I saw the blueprints of those ships. And so they're representing part of uh, the Octurian fleet right there. The emanation of the blue at the bottom of the planet also represent our crystalline blue planet uh, within the Octurus realm, that emanation of light, and of course, with the light language in the, in the middle. So that symbol, which now is my official logo, uh, is also designed to activate people. So it's gonna speak to you in very different ways. Your soul knows and understands this language. It's not designed for the 3D lower mind, but it's really designed for soul language. So just to give you a little bit more. Okay, that's yeah. beautiful there. And since we talked about the Lyrians, and of course, now I want to go into uh, Lyrians. Uh, we folks, I, some of them are actually lion beings and probably were part of what was called the Syrian shift from a long time ago that I've spoken about uh, in the transhumanist agenda of the, all the bronze, the Pleiadians that kind of had them going around like pirates and uh, genetically altering species. But um, something always good comes with different things. So tell us, what do the Octurians look like? Um, I mean, your father, I mean, are they really tall? We, we know they're interdimensional and have some kind of a light realm aspect to that. Um, um, are they tall? Are they green screen, blue screen? 
Um, do they have Spock-like ears? <laughs> I mean, I don't want to make sensationalize it or make fun of it, but you know, it is interesting to learn about the very, the various uh, forms and races in God's creation. Can you share a little uh, about? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, with pleasure, of course. I'm what, what I'm about to share, it's my own personal experience with my star people and especially with my father. So this is the experience I've had ever since I've been back on the planet, okay? So when I look at my people, they're really, really tall on average. Like my father is about at least 10, sometime between 10 and 11 feet tall. Very tall, very lanky, kind of like very, very long arms and lanky, uh, beautiful three long digit fingers. So when I go into channel or when I do energy work, after time, automatically my finger goes into three digit and I do my work that way. That's because I am embracing my octron emanation. So automatically my my other fingers will close down and then I realize that I am in that octron state. So beautiful three di digit fingers and no hair. We have no hair whatsoever. So in previous interviews, I always says one of my favorite feature is truly my hair as a human because I think it's fascinating to have air. I don't know what to do with it. I wash them, obviously, and I come there and I dry them. But besides that, you know, if you look at all the pictures of me, it's, my hair is pretty much the same way. <laughs> you know, I don't know what to do with it. It's fascinating. Well, so we have um, no hair. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I apologize. I, I'm feeling so so excited. I'm having some comfort food while we're going here, but a little ice cream. But um, I want to um, hair are our, our antenna. It's actually a connection to the astral plane and aids in the human sensitivity. I'm sure the Andromedans don't really need that. Let's let's talk a little bit. Um, I'm not sure the timing that we have here, but um, it's been over an hour. Okay, well let's uh, let's talk a uh, a little bit about uh, the space build property clearing. Um, okay. Um, so, so you do uh, you do a, a past life uh, hypnosis type of thing? Well, that's a great question. Um, we perceive it differently. We we see it more in terms of navigating to the quantum field, and to the quantum field, we can have access to different aspects of the Akash memory. Um, you know, I'm about to change my website to a new one, and there will be additional services such as Akashic record reading that I do with the gateways and we look at different aspect of what kind of training you had on the other side, who you've been connecting with, with masters and others. But when we look at this one, the quantum, the QHHT, we know that it's been designed originally by Dolores Cannon. I was drawn to it because of the navigational point to the quantum field. Um, and this is how we perceive it. Again, I'm bringing our turn perspective to this. Um, I had some conversation with an aspect of Dolores Cannon. We know that she is passed over, that she is in the higher realm. And one thing that she smiled upon me and she said to me that she loved the way I bring my Arcturian perspective to a technique quantum field so it's an aspect of it and we know when you're in a quantum field rob you can go in any directions so whether it's past present future self i've seen aspect where the future self will come not just past self uh, we can have access to different aspect of that person which is why i love the quantum field the one you're just crawling very quickly through it's a syrian it's an ancient syrian we call it the ancient Syrian uh, template is done to the unity field healing that was developed by um, Dr. John Ryan with the white, the blue white Syrian collective. Again, we bring our intergalactic perspective to it. It's a three step, very powerful achievement uh, that was done in a very protocol way, a very sacred way. Um, that's another aspect of the work that we offer right now. I was to, I was told very clearly that what's coming up for me in the pipeline, so to speak, is that my work is going to shift all over again. Uh, I've seen, they show me, I've seen over between 40 and 50 ships coming through into the, coming into the quadrant 
uh, this quadrant is your galaxy. This is how we call it. New groups coming in, which we'll, we'll, we'll be interacting with, we'll be learning from. And uh, I've been asking that I want to move into a more teaching mode. I want to teach people how to restore themselves, access to the own Akashic record, how you can really upgrade your own energy lake lines, how you can even upgrade your internal gateways and, and so forth. So for now, this is what we're doing, but we're really expanding. There's much, much more to come. So I'm excited about that too. So um, before we go, because uh, there's a healing grid there, but um, can you, um, where if people want to get the ticket to the conference, where would they go here on your website to find that? I don't really see it. Uh, right here. So why don't you guide us? Uh, would that be under events calendar? Uh, the event calendar will be a, a way to do it. I know that I'm working with, um, we had some technical glitches on the website recently. So the okay. calendar, as you see it right now, is not completely up to date because it happened over the weekend. So I'm working with my webmaster to update that so the link can be uh, right on the the calendar but it will be on the events calendar yes that's okay correct. so um miss i don't know if we can uh i can't really share it here uh but i guess um um it will be when you go to the her site here which is infinite healing from the stars.com infinite healing from the stars.com hopefully um in a day or two um you can go to that uh site here connect with her and um, you can go to on the side uh, bar where it says home, alternative energy matrix, field, healing grid, book now about us. It will uh, be on the event calendar. Events calendar down there. Mm -hmm. And yes. um, that's where you're going to want to uh, click to support her and get your ticket. So, yeah, absolutely. Anyway, so th that's there. Thank you so much. It's been a wonderful um, uh, thing. I was wondering. Um, what do you think uh, at the conference? Would you be able to do one of these processes with an entire group or would the energy be too distracted or um, what do you think? Yes, I'm, we're planning on it. The team is already preparing uh, the terrain for this. So we want to bring and we're going to open a quantum space. What we really want to do uh, an turn gateway light activation group settings. And also uh, we're planning on being able to work individually with people who come to see us. So we invite you to come and see us also at our vendor booth. Uh, the lecture um, will be able to, you know, we want to work with as many people as possible. We're also doing a very powerful planetary activation when we're going to be in Manchester. We're connecting two very powerful planetary grids from Manchester to Sedona and then to also the celestial and the universal grids that we want to do when we're there. Yeah, we might. Um... Maybe we, we might do that on the Skywatch night if everything works out or possibly I'm thinking with my I'm going to have my entire pyramid system, which I don't know if you can see it there. The yeah. entire thing is going to be set up in the, in the hall number two in the smaller lodge. And um, that'll be more intimate. And um, sometimes in larger groups, sometimes the energy cannot be as conducive. So we can, you know, maybe we'll have you in a, a second presentation in a different room that might be more um, potent for that. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to, um, I just got to get the schedule out, folks. It's uh, th three different rooms in two different locations over four different days with 27 different speakers. So I have a big puzzle to start to put together. And, um, and not, I know there's always going to be some that's not going to be happy with the schedule, but I got to do my best. And, um, and uh, try and make sure that uh, we have enough panels and some people, uh, everyone gets some exposure here. So I uh, thank you so very much for coming on the show today. And again, uh, infinitehealingfromthestars.com, Vivian Chauvet, 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 uh, our Arcturian hybrid uh, from, <laughs> from Canada, now in Sedona. Um, again, thank you so much for coming on the show. And it's... Uh, in quite a ride. I know that we're going into some areas that are very difficult for people to follow the red pill. But for those who are kind of like awakening to the possibilities of the infinite light and the mind of the creator and the truth of God and the spiritual hierarchy of light, these things are going to be easier and easier to assimilate. So keep the hope uh, uh, in your heart. 
keep the faith and keep an open mind and um, you know keep your eyes on on what's happening around you and use discernment extremely when you're dealing with your political systems of governance and what's being told to you as truth. Uh, bounce it off uh, your own heart within. Uh, Vivian, I'm going to let you have some final words and then we'll sign off here. Absolutely. Higher discernment comes from the bridging of your higher mental faculties in your heart center. Remember that to always ask your heart, what does it feel to me? What does my heart have to say? There's great wisdom within you. Utilize it. Stay anchor into your light more than ever. And just see the world around you as we are moving, shifting from a very old matrix reality to a newer version, so to speak. And it's just allow yourself to change with more ease, with more grace. We're happy to connect with you. We're here to be of service. And I am really happy to be here in the Phoenix area in Arizona. And of course, online, we're always available. All right. Well, thank you so much. And um, folks, so uh, we'll see you again. We got some other, uh, I think we got um, Suzanne Ross and Shakina Rose coming up. And uh, hopefully I'm going to get Alex Collier and Raymond Keller on here at some point. And um, if you do want to come to the conference, book your room. The t town is filling up. There's a, a reggae festival in town called uh, Rasta at Shasta dot com check it out and if you buy a ticket you get a special discount code um, so we'll see you in mount shasta hopefully or keep keep your eyes on the price thank you so much for having us on the, uh or having come on my show today Vivian. thank you for having me rob bye